Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, in the chat box, type OK if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting for Avatrade. As we get going, let's do a quick systems check. Please type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, great. I've got enough responses. Looks like we're up and running fine. Uh, if anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind that there is risk with each and every trade that you take. No one trade is guaranteed to bring profits. So in some way, you should have a risk management plan. Uh, no, that is not a picture of me, Matthew. <laughs> Good question. Uh, so uh, in some way, as I was saying, make sure you have a risk management plan uh, that, that makes sense for your balance, your risk tolerance, et cetera. Uh, in different tools you can use, whether it's your stop loss uh, setting or setting up hedge positions to, to cover risk in the opposite direction. Usually that's done like with pending orders in case uh, important price levels break unexpectedly, you can cover yourself in the opposite direction uh, with pending sell stops or pending buy, buy stops, uh, whichever the case may be. Uh, and then we have a special tool called Ava Protect that's available on our Ava Trade Go uh, mobile app, which is an award-winning mobile app. Uh, also, we have Ava Protect on our Web Trader platform, which is a, a tool where you can, for a small premium cost, cover against any and all risk for defined periods of time. And so, in some way, with those tools or with with other ideas, you should you should be managing your risk in a way that makes sense for you. Uh, now, as we go forward, also keep in mind that what we're covering is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. What is fundamental analysis? Real quick, it is basically the news. It's what's happening around the world that is creating either positive or negative sentiment or flat sentiment uh, sometimes, so that you get an idea of which way is the wind blowing, so to speak, in terms of the markets and then you could have a preference for what direction you might choose to trade as you get on the charts looking for entry and exit points so uh you know there's definitely was a driving fundamental story yesterday that made it obvious what direction you should have been trading uh we had a webinar yesterday uh and went over those ideas and concepts and uh we'll talk about that how it's carrying over today and what the what the fundamental news is today uh, there are a couple different types of fundamental analysis that you can do uh, one we might call regular economic events these are events uh, that are scheduled in advance we know exactly what the information will be when it will be etc uh, we'll take a look at some of that type of information today and then the other are extraordinary economic events uh, which is similar to what was happening yesterday. Fear about uh, the virus outbreak getting worse in, in different areas with the new strain uh, of the COVID virus. And you, know, you just don't know when those headlines will hit, when those stories will break. And that's the other type of extraordinary uh, economic event that, that can happen when we're talking about fundamental analysis and fundamental news. And so uh, we need to take those into account, both types, the known economic information and the unknown information, and prepare uh, for the unknown while trading with the known information. And it might sound complicated, but it's really not so complicated, and we'll go through some ideas of how to do that today. If you have any questions as we go along, please let me know. You can type in the chat box uh, any questions or ideas that you might want to share. So let's take a look then uh, at the main headlines that, that I found. It took me five minutes to find these headlines, even less. Uh, dollar climbs to multi-month highs, that was yesterday. 
typically, the U.S. dollar is one of the currencies that's referred to as a safe haven currency, along with the yen and the Swiss franc. Uh, so the U.S. dollar strengthened a lot yesterday uh, and has been strengthening over the past couple of weeks. And so uh, you might ask yourself, well, why? What, why would the U.S. dollar strengthen? Why is there fear driving people into the U.S. dollar that's viewed somewhat as a safe haven? Uh, and why has gold been dropping? Uh, you know, I thought gold was the safe haven, right? Uh, and the idea here is, you know, gold is a safe haven from inflation, typically. So, you know, as, as all the stimulus measures were, were being enacted and the low interest rates and the, the, the free money was being handed out, uh, the U.S. dollar was weakening. That caused this inflation of prices. And so gold was the safe haven when the fears were inflation. Now the fears are the opposite. The fears aren't uh, that inflation's going to keep going up as much as that economies are going to slow down from the new Delta uh, virus, the Delta version of the COVID virus. So uh, if, if the fear now is not inflation, but uh, economies doing the opposite, maybe having to shut things down again, then gold is not the safe haven. Uh, if inflation is not the fear, if, if the opposite is the fear, then the safe haven tends to be the safe haven currencies, one being uh, the USD and also bonds, by the way. Bond prices went flying up and the yields went down because demand rushed into the bonds as well. And so uh, U.S. dollar strengthened, bond yields dropped as the bond prices went up as there was risk aversion. People were leaving the riskier stocks uh, that are typically faster growth. But uh, during times of fear, economic fear, not inflation fear, uh, the U.S. dollar tends to be a, a currency of choice as well as bonds. So dollar climbed to multi-month highs yesterday, capping off that climb, so to speak. And uh, it's risk aversion because of the fears about COVID getting worse again. Uh, type OK if you all are hearing me all right. I have uh, one person saying they can't hear. Okay, it's just the one person then. All right, so uh, thank you. I've got enough responses. It was just uh, John, he couldn't hear. Looks like he's already logged out. So he's having some system issues. Okay, uh, so we see now today a snapshot here. The futures are green. All this red here on the Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ, that's yesterday's close. So down huge. We see already today in the futures before the US market opens, the opposite. The market is green in the futures. And unlike yesterday, the volatility is down, not up. So fear is down, volatility is down on the fear index, the volatility index. US dollar is starting to weaken a little, or at least it's staying flat, and the futures are green. It's the opposite setup from yesterday. Yesterday, the futures were red, the volatility index was way up in the green, so fear was way up. I'm talking 20, 30 percent uh, increase on the volatility index, and the dollar index was way up as well. So risk aversion was happening, fear was up, and the futures were red. That was the setup yesterday at this time. So the obvious move yesterday was sell on the equities, and they crashed. Also, sell on gold if the U.S. dollar was strengthening so much, and there was a a, a fear that uh economies might be slowing down so the the rush was out of gold and out of the equities and into the us dollar into bonds now the opposite setup is here we've got the futures are green not red we've got fear down not up and the dollar down not up so all of those are in line with a bounce back that's a that, that, that's occurring right now from that huge drop yesterday but it's not as strong of a bounce back as yesterday's drop was. And what I mean is fear was up like 30% yesterday on the volatility index. It's only down 4%, right? So it's not as strong of a bounce as it was a drop. It's a, it's a small bounce right now. The momentum is not as strong up as it was down yesterday. So it, it's, it seems more like a pause in the fear and not an elimination of it based on these numbers. OK, so keep that in mind. 
Uh, U.S. dollar has been strong now because of fear. It looks like the fear kind of reached a, a boiling point yesterday, and now things have calmed down a little bit with markets bouncing back some, but but not nearly all the way back from yesterday's uh, sell-off. Next headline, stocks recover even as global uh, recovery fears linger, and that's what we just talked about, right? Uh, we, we see stocks recovering some, but the fears linger. That's the important part here in that headline. Fears linger. All that fear from yesterday is not gone. Still there. So fundamentally speaking, you might be waiting and hoping for a good price to short some of these instruments that crashed yesterday. If you believe this headline that the fear lingers. Okay. Economically, what do we see? Uh, more of the same of what has been creating some of the fear as well, meaning uh, these German PPI numbers, that's purchasing price index, higher than expected. Okay, month over month, over 1% increase in prices. Okay, 1.3% increase in prices from one month to the next on the, the PPI numbers. That shows larger than expected inflation, right? What do central banks do? What do monetary policy decision makers do if inflation continues to be higher than expected, higher than ideal? They take anti-inflation to inflationary measures, like maybe raising the interest rate back up, maybe stopping the bond buying program or cutting back on it on it in the US. Uh, all of those stimulus measures, if they're causing too much inflation, eventually need to be pulled back. And so each time Wall Street and, and, and London and the investment centers around the world see inflation is higher than ideal, higher than expected, there's the fear that uh, stimulus measures are more likely to be removed. And if that's the case, then too high of inflation actually causes uh, a sell-off potentially in the market eventually. And that's part of what caused yesterday's sell-off as well, was a combination of fear about COVID and that uh, you know inflation had gotten too high. The, the numbers for the past weeks have been showing higher than expected inflation. Now the feds in the US keep calling it transitory inflation, that it's nothing to worry about, but investors have it on their minds for sure. So that's something to look at. Uh, as we look at the housing numbers coming out of the U.S. today, building permits, housing starts uh, month over month, and, and for last month total number, uh, if, if the housing industry shows a pullback, if the numbers are worse than expected in the U.S. for new building permits, for housing starts, et cetera, if that happens later today, then that'll be signs that inflation maybe got out of hand because housing prices were hitting uh, – recent highs. The, the growth of housing prices was at record highs lately in the U.S. And so uh, if, if that housing price growth out, outpaces wage growth, if inflation is too high on housings, housing prices and, and for that matter, retail sales and everything else, if those prices are rising faster than incomes, then that's a, a negative type of inflation, meaning some inflation is good, but too high of inflation is viewed as bad. So if we start to see negative numbers because of uh, prices getting out of hand, and we'll see with these housing numbers what, what happens. Maybe the housing numbers are solid and that eases some of the fear. If those housing numbers come in worse than expected, you could see the, that fear that's lingering, that that headline showed, uh, you could see that fear come right back. You could see a continuation of yesterday's sell-off, okay, and a strengthening of the USD a dropping of commodities, et cetera. So uh, we need to keep an eye on the upcoming announcements to get an idea of whether that fear is going to return today or not, okay? As it lingers, as the headline said. Uh, Matthew, you're asking if institutional traders can manipulate movement, uh, playing off the idea of fear. Anything is possible, right? Uh, you know, if, if you had the, a large enough pocket uh, as, as an institutional size trader, whether you, you own a large bank or whatever it might be, 
and and maybe you're being loaded with uh, you know a lot of uh, trades in one direction as an as an end liquidity provider, and and you say, okay, I, if we can shake the market in the opposite direction, maybe I can make larger profits. Uh, it's possible that some large institutional size uh, traders could try to manipulate the market. Sure. Now there are certain laws that have to be followed, right? Market manipulation in 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 some respects is illegal, uh, but if it's done in in a legal fashion, sure, traders can try and and, and uh, you know cause a a short squeeze or a long squeeze, uh, as as happens on Wall Street with uh, you know these these large hedge fund traders, etc. So uh, certainly there there can be those trying to move the market if they have large institutional uh, size investments, but you have to take that into account with your risk management, with your stop loss, with uh, how you set things up. And and also in the end, the larger overall economic picture is what really takes over uh, beyond any small bumps that, that large investors could cause in, in the market movement, okay? So as, as we look then at the upcoming announcements today, we know that this could likely cause some fear to return or to continue to ease people's fear as they're on the fence, could go one way or the other. So we have that in mind that we could have potential large movement one way or the other. We could have a strong recovery back up from yesterday's drop, or we could see a return to the red uh, on this board with, with, the, uh, with the market if these numbers come in uh, against what the the investors want to see. Okay, so uh, I mentioned AVA Protect. We can look real quick. How can you use the AVA Protect feature to uh, protect yourself against losses for defined periods of time? Uh, you can go to AVA Trade Go and put that on your mobile device. You'll see AVA Protect is available on gold, silver, FX pairings, uh, and it's a small premium cost and it protects against all losses for whatever period of time you choose, by the hour, by the day, et cetera. You also can program your take profit, your stop loss. And when you do that, it, the, the app and our web trader will tell you how much you're risking to your stop loss in your account currency. It will calculate it for you. Same for your take profit. It calculates how much you would make to that price. So our mobile app and our web trader platform both act as trade calculators to help you understand what you're getting into in terms of risk and potential profit before you open your trade, okay? And so many times, especially beginner traders, don't understand how to calculate the exposure, the potential profit, the margin requirement. All of that is explained to you in the order window on our app and on the web trader uh, platform. And the web trader platform is found here. Click login and you'll be in this platform. Okay, and by the way, our web trader platform works from your mobile device as well. So whether you use our app or just log in straight away from our website, you can log in from a Mac, from a PC, from a mobile device, et cetera. And the web trader works just fine. Uh, there are too many features for me to show you in this session on the web trader, but you know, you could create favorites lists by clicking the star. There are convenient search features. Uh, there are groupings, most rising, most falling. There's all kinds of stuff you can do here. Uh, since this is a fundamental analysis webinar, if there's a feature here if you click uh, and go to Trading Central. Market Buzz gives you fundamental news articles on whichever instrument you choose. You also have free signals through analyst views. So lots of premium features for free that are only available if you trade on your MT4 or MT5 account through the web trader and the web trader trades on any of those account types. Here's the market buzz. If I wanna know about uh, what's trending in the news right now, understand the latest fundamental news. Uh, the biggest bubbles have the, have the most news articles breaking. JP Morgan, Amazon, Microsoft. If I click on the bubble, it brings me the articles in order of most recent. So what's the most recent news coming out on Microsoft? Here it is right at the top. I click on it and there's the article, okay? My fundamental research done for me, all I have to do is look at it, make a decision what I wanna do once I understand the latest fundamental news. So if I wanna trade on Microsoft stock, here's the latest article. Very simple to use. 
Uh, so very cool features for you guys uh, to check out on our web trader. Now, let's go ahead and, and get on the MT4 account and take a look at what's happening with the current movements and what kind of opportunities might you have. Uh, good question. XAU USD is gold. XAU is, is, it stands for gold. If you look on a periodic table of the elements, for those of you who, who remember chemistry class, okay, if you look at the periodic table, AU stands for gold, okay? And the X is just a placeholder. So XAU USD is gold paired against the USD. Very good question. All right, so uh, yeah, I, I guess you did not, didn't think that uh, chemistry might come in hand for trading. Good point. Uh, okay, so let's look at, we're on the US Tech 100 right now. And, and we drew this line yesterday. We, we said, uh, if you're a purely technical trader yesterday, we saw that the NASDAQ had reached near this support level. We drew the support level off the four hour candles and we said, this is a line of support, technically speaking. Support, support, bounce. Support, bounce. It got near this price, bounced again. And yesterday we saw that it hit and was bouncing. And so what we said was you could take a buy off the support, even though it was going against the fundamental news that was occurring yesterday, you could have bought off that support level and look, you'd be in profit. It's still above that support level. Now, the other option we said was to put a sell stop pending order to sell from down here. Okay, if the price broke the support level by enough, you could trigger a sell stop pending order down here. And you still could, by the way. Uh, uh, Biki XAUUSD, yes, that's gold. Whether you put a slash mark between XAU and USD, uh, it's still the same instrument, but you have to type it the right way uh, to find it on our platform. Okay, uh, so what we're looking at here then is a small recovery in the market, a bounce after yesterday's large plunge. And the question is, is this a true recovery or is this going to cap itself? And if we look and we keep in mind the fact that they said the fear was lingering, right? The fear is lingering in the headlines. Uh, we've got announcements coming later today that could either ease the fear or make the fear worse. So then we see that there's a potential opportunity here. We see a resistance level here, resistance, resistance, resistance on the 15 minute candles. We're near that resistance, okay? Those announcements later today are uh, coming in a couple hours, right? Let's take a look back at the economic schedule. We see here building permits are coming out at 8.30 a.m. New York time, okay? That's uh, 1.30 London time, which is a couple hours from now, in about two hours, okay? So then we're looking at... Whoops, there's where I want to be. Then we're looking at the chart and we're saying, if this gets near this resistance and that announcement then comes out and the building permits miss the mark, you could see a drop off, right? And we're pretty close to that resistance now. So you could say, listen, I'm going to, uh, let me take, I don't know, a quarter of a lot. I mean, the trade size is based on your balance, right? But in this case, I'm saying quarter of a lot, and I'll put my stop loss above this resistance. Okay, you might think that it won't break this resistance unless the building permits come out better than expected, and it kind of eases the fear that there's been too much inflation, and uh, you know the, the the new home sales and all that. If those numbers come out solid, you could see a further easing of the fear, and you might see the Nasdaq have a continued recovery up. If that happens, then your stop loss is just beyond the resistance and you don't lose much, okay? It's a limited risk. If, as we get closer to that announcement, this pushes down, whoops, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my take profit. I'll put my take profit down here near yesterday's lows, just before, okay? My take profit is about three times or four times what I'm risking, right? Just the eye test. 
this distance here is three or four times the potential profit compared to the risk. If those building permits come out and housing startups, et cetera, uh, if those numbers are not what's expected and they create more fear, you could easily see the market sell off back down to where, where it was yesterday. And so putting your take profit above yesterday's low makes sense that that fundamental news, if it drives a, a sell off again, that the sell off could reach somewhere near yesterday's low. Okay. Now, uh, if those numbers come out better than expected and the fear really disappears today and this resistance level breaks through at the same spot you give up on your sell, what kind of pending order could we buy with from here? If this resistance level breaks and the movement comes up here, then maybe those, those numbers were good. Uh, and, and maybe we see a recovery in the market, what kind of pending order would buy from above this resistance level that you could place just in case those numbers are better than expected? Yeah, a buy stop pending order, exactly, buy stop. So I at the same time I'm doing a market sell thinking, hey, for the next two hours, those numbers have not come out yet. And so perhaps this resistance level holds and we see this drop off in the next two hours. And by the way, you could take profit sooner than this low. I would expect before those numbers come out in a couple hours that this will pull down maybe to this support level and then kind of range until the numbers come out. So if you're scalping, you could take a profit sooner. Like right now, it's already dropped. I could take you know, $80 profit or whatever I'm looking to make as a scalp. As we get closer to the announcements, then it's probably going to freeze up, go sideways and wait to see the numbers, right? We preemptively got in with a sell here in this uh, demonstration. The buy stop pending order would be preparing for numbers that maybe the market will like if, if that's the case when those numbers come out. And so because we're not Nostradamus, we're not gonna predict the future here, we're, we're, we're trading with a strategy. We're not trading by guessing. So we're selling because we're near the resistance and we have a much better setup risk to potential profit with, with the, the fear potentially able to come back today. We also understand that could be wrong. And so we're setting up uh, in this example with a buy stop pending order up above the resistance, let's say at the stop loss price of the market move around 14,659. Okay, and then in that case, your stop loss would be back below this resistance at maybe 14,625. And you take profit then, if it's really good news, could be up here near the old uh, resistance, 14,800, let's say. Okay, so our potential profit is uh, about 140 points up, and our risk is about 34 points down, okay? A huge uh, advantage in terms of risk reward, okay? If our entry price is up here, it's on the same spot, so you don't see the green line because it mixed with the stop loss of the other trade. If the stop loss hits on the sell, boom, you're in on the buy because you, you would say, hey, it broke the resistance. Now, if I look over here, I can see there's a little more resistance right here. So maybe my uh, buy position, I want to get clear of all of that resistance to get up here before I would uh, assume it's a, a true breakthrough. My stop loss would still need to be down below that resistance, okay? So I've increased the risk a little bit, but my potential profit is still much greater. And I take a look at four hour candles, I can see my take profits right up here. Now I can cheat that up a little bit. There's the actual resistance level at the top of this wick and this wick. So here's the shoulder, head and shoulders. The shoulders are the first major resistance if there is a market recovery. So you take potential profit maybe just before that resistance level. So my potential profit is much greater than my risk on that buy position, okay? 
And all the while, we already enacted a sell position in case the fear comes back. Okay, so this is kind of a one-two setup going with what we know right now. There's still some fear on the market with the sell from just below the resistance level and also preparing for what we know is coming. A lot of housing data out of the U.S. that could serve to either ease the fear or make it worse. So we're prepared for a, 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 a recovery day today if the fear really eases further. We're prepared for a breakthrough of the resistance and a buy position. Okay, if that's what happens with the market, uh, if the fear returns, okay, we're ready in in this simulation uh, with a sell position. Ah, uh, okay, good question. The question was, why doesn't uh, the U.S. Tech 100, otherwise known as the Nasdaq, uh, why doesn't it show the Ava Protect feature in the Web Trader or in Ava Trade Go? The answer is Ava Protect is only available on our instruments that are traded on what we call spot price, okay? Uh, gold, silver, and all FX pairings are traded on spot price. The other instruments are traded on the futures contracts. They're traded on futures prices, which are not available with the protection, okay? It's a nuance of the protection. We're working on being able to get the protection available on those futures traded instruments as well but for now it's those traded on spot which are all the fx pairings gold and silver so uh the indices unfortunately don't have the ava protect feature available uh but but boy it, it comes in handy especially on gold because gold can move a hundred dollars an ounce in one one day right and and so you could have a huge potential profit and protect yourself for a small premium cost in case it goes the wrong way could go $100 an ounce the wrong way, and uh, and you only you only down the premium if it had all that negative movement during your protected time period. Okay, so uh, check it out. It might be something you like to use uh, with with the instruments that do offer it. Now, if we take a look at crude oil, you say, "Wow, crude oil plunged." Well, why did crude oil plunge? Two reasons, fundamentally speaking. It was like the perfect storm yesterday. Not only did OPEC plus, the OPEC plus nations finally decide, hey, yeah, we're going to increase production, which then causes oil price to drop if they're agreeing to increase production. That's why oil prices were bearish and dropping. But then at the same time, all these COVID fears hit. So that was bad timing with the OPEC plus nations to finally stop bickering and agree to increase production. And, and, and then at the same time, all the COVID fear hit. And so it was a double whammy on oil prices and they plunged. Okay, that's what happened with oil yesterday. And so uh, could there be a bounce back in oil prices? Absolutely. That was a huge knee jerk sell off yesterday in oil. So we're looking at 30 minute candles and we see a support level has formed. Okay, uh, I have some uh, sell limit uh trades programmed from yesterday that if oil bounced back up those would sell from a better price with all the fear right and still those make sense sell limit makes sense if oil bounces up to a resistance level when the fear is still kind of there on you know traders are still on the fence then it might make sense to sell from a resistance level okay in in the meantime in the meantime since there's a support level that formed and fear has kind of waned a little bit, it could make sense to, to buy on crude oil from the low point. So I might take a shot at buying on crude oil and put my stop loss below the support level right down here. I don't have to risk much at all in that setup. If I go to four hour candles, I say, wow, I'm only risking from my entry price just now down to here to get below the low points with my stop loss and my potential profit on this market move, if if the fear wanes the rest of the week, if the fear decreases the rest of the week, my potential profit before it has to break a major resistance level, wow, it's like five times what I'm risking, three times anyways, you know, risking three or four times or, or potential profit of three or four times of what I'm risking buying right now on oil, if fear disappears today, wow, that could be a great payout. And I don't have to risk much for that. 
and already I have sell positions. If 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 it's a temporary bounce in oil, I also can have at the same time I'm buying, I can have sell positions from these higher prices as well. This is the old tradition of buying low and selling high. I can lock in some some hedge uh, profits at higher price levels to sell up here from the resistance. And if those housing prices, let's say this does climb, my buy position is in profit, and then those home uh, housing numbers out of the U.S. come in uh, to create more fear, then these sell positions all of a sudden look really nice too if, if I get in at a higher price to sell. Okay, so uh, there's nothing wrong with, in this case, buying low as the fear has disappeared a bit. We see the volatility is down now. The futures are green. So buying on oil right now could make sense temporarily anyways, and also be pre prepared to sell from these resistance levels in case you get those high, higher prices and at the same time those housing prices come in negative. I say housing prices, it's really not housing prices. It's uh, housing startups, new contracts for houses, et cetera, uh, which will tell the tale as to whether the housing industry is still uh, roaring in the US or maybe the prices have gotten too high to support more startups, more contracts on houses. So it's an interesting situation trying to buy the bounce, but also prepare to sell from the resistance in case the fear is still there. And in the case of uh, our pending order down here on the US Tech 100, we even prepared to buy from a higher price if it breaks the resistance. Okay, so preparing for the unknown. We don't know what the housing numbers will be. Also trading with the known, there's a bounce occurring. The fear is, has waned a bit. And this is how you can trade the fundamental news situation. Okay, I, I think we've, we've hit on a number of traditional instruments. What about the cryptocurrencies? If you've been paying attention, for those of you who have cryptocurrencies, uh, if you're in the UK, uh, you can't trade on cryptocurrencies with us anymore. They've, they've been banned in the UK. Uh, but other places around the world, uh, you might be interested in, in looking at the cryptocurrencies as they've had huge, huge pullbacks. And you might like the price points or the price action that's been occurring as there's been a lot of volatility. If we look at Bitcoin uh, as an example, look at the drop that Bitcoin has continued with. Look at that drop. These are four hour candles. That's a sustained, sustained downtrend. Now, the question is, do you want to try and buy the bounce, maybe? We see it broke the one-day candle. These are one-day candles. And this was a support level here around 30,000, just below. Support, support, support. It just broke it today and bounced back up. Okay? It just bounced back up above 30,000. Now it's teetering below 30,000. If we go to four hour candles, then we can say uh, this. If I if I draw a line here, that's the 30,000 mark approximately. That might be your stop loss if you're selling. If you if you think there's going to be a continued sell off in the crypto market, this 30,000 mark, this little old support level that now it broke below, that could be a stop loss that makes sense somewhere up here if you're going to short the market further, if you expect a continued sell-off in this market. Also, you could say this is a spot that if it breaks back above this price point, okay, this 30,130, which was the support level on the one-day candles here before this huge climb, if it breaks back above that, a buy stop pending order could make sense, okay? So you could say, it. it you could you could trade on both of these movements okay and this is more of a technical trading strategy i can say market movement looks like it's it broke the major one day candle support it's below 30000 so maybe i say on bitcoin i'm looking to uh sell because of the technical setup here all right and there's some fundamentals behind why the cryptocurrencies have been selling off as well some increased regulatory uh, tightening around the world, including China as the lead example, and also uh, risk aversion is going on in general as the U.S. dollar strengthened. So there's reason why maybe you believe 
this could sell off further and you put your stop loss above this one day candle resistance, which was the old support that got broken. Then at the same time, you could say, I'm going to have a, a pending order in case the fear disappears. I can put in a buy stop pending order above this one day candle resistance, say 30,500, that if it hits that price, it broke back above that old support level on the one day candles. Maybe that's reason enough to take a buy and get as as you would get out of your sell and then put your stop loss back below 30,000, 29,500, let's say, and your take profit could be, you know, if it's a true reversal back up of the market, you could be looking at, I don't know, 32,500 is not, not so ridiculous to think that you could get a bounce uh, on something like Bitcoin. So we're looking at risk on the buy position. If it breaks back above this old support level here, we're looking at uh, potential profit, you know, maybe two to three times what you're risking to your stop loss. And at the same time, selling now, you're risking a lot less than what the sell-off could drop to. If we look at the one-week candles, a take profit on the sell could be uh, all the way down near 20,000 if this is a huge, huge sell-off, okay? Here's, here's an old resistance level at, at 14,600. I've heard some say they think Bitcoin could drop to 15,000 before it recovers. 20,000 also was an old number of resistance that could act as support right around this area here. OK, 19,800, 20,000. So if you split that difference and say, OK, 25,000. OK, so if that's the case, then I can go into this position. If I'm shorting something like Bitcoin, I could put a stop loss. or I'm sorry, take profit at something like 25,000. Which is only halfway to that first major support level. And now my potential profit is maybe 10 times what I'm risking on this sell, okay? Could be wrong, but it's a it's a limited risk, high reward situation here, okay? Yeah, Matthew, if you're looking at the moving averages, crude oil could be a nice uh, situation there as well. You know, you've got to look at the moving averages. Maybe we'll do that sometime. But, you know, if you see the 50-day moving average cross the 200-day moving average, that's a sign of, a, of, of an actual market reversal. So keep an eye on that as well. Uh, it's not something we have time for today, but uh, it's something to look at since you mentioned moving averages. Uh, okay, so we'll zoom back in maybe on four hour candles on Bitcoin and say, okay, we're, we're in on a short if the fear comes back. We're ready to buy on Bitcoin if the fear subsides and it breaks above the one day candle support level, confirming an uptrend then you're in on a buy stop, okay? And you only need to be right once to make a nice profit on these types of moves. And, and they're based on fundamentals tied to proper technical entry points based on price levels. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you for joining. Good luck with your trading the rest of the week. Uh, I'm on vacation Thursday, Friday, hence the webinars on Monday, Tuesday this week instead of Tuesday, Thursday. So uh, I'll be back at it next week uh, on Tuesday for the next webinar. That'll be on Tuesday evening. All right, everybody, good luck in the, re the, the rest of the week with your trading. And, uh, you know, be in touch with your account managers if, if you have any questions between now and then. All right, bye, everybody.